what are the implications of eschatology? This is part four uh, in a series dealing with asking this particular question, and then hopefully I'm going to answer some of these by looking at some very important passages. The most important passage, uh, to my mind, is Matthew chapter 24, which makes up a triad of what is called the, the Olivet Discourse. Uh, Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21 are parallel passages which deal with Jesus' discourse on the Mount of Olives where he is answering the question about how the temple will be destroyed and when the temple will be destroyed and when the end of the age is. And there's been a lot of copy written about this, a lot of ink spilled over this particular passage. And as I mentioned in the previous session, uh, it was the passage that Bertrand Russell looked at as being critical of Jesus' view of eschatology. He made this definite statement that he was going to return within that generation, and since he did not, he was wrong. Therefore, if Jesus is wrong about this particular thing, he's probably wrong about other things as well. And we also saw Bert Ehrman, who took popular versions of the interpretation of Matthew chapter 24 and came to a similar conclusion. Uh, the question is, uh, who's right on all of this? Well, I believe Jesus is right on this. When he said he was going to return before the last disciple uh, died, I think he was, he, well, I don't think, I know, he was absolutely right. He returned in judgment before that particular generation passed away. Matthew chapter 24, verse 34, Jesus says, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. And he was definitive about that. And he was referring to the generation to whom he was speaking. Now, I've dealt with this in several books. Uh, one, a short version of an exposition of Matthew 24. You can find it in my book, Is Jesus Coming Soon? Uh, a larger exposition is in my book, Last Day's Madness. And I'm not going to take, I'm not going to go through all the details of this. I want to lay this out for somebody who's maybe never heard this before. If you have additional questions about it, I suggest you either go to Is Jesus Coming Soon? or um, Last Day's Madness for a fuller verse-by-verse -verse exposition. So, Matthew chapter 24, anytime you read the Bible, you want to get the context to whom is Jesus speaking and what's he speaking about. Uh, Matthew chapter 23, Jesus is dealing with the religious leaders of the day. He tells them uh, in verse 38 of chapter 23, Behold, your house is being left to you desolate. The house that he was referring to here was the temple. Uh, for, and then he goes in verse 39, For truly I say, for I say to you, from now on you shall not see me until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Chapter 24, verse 1, And Jesus came out from the temple and was going away when his disciples came up to point out the temple buildings to him. Now why were they pointing out the temple buildings to Jesus? Because Jesus had just said previously that their house was going to be left to them desolate. Jesus was in the temple and he was said, This house is going to be left to you desolate. The disciples understood this and it had happened before under the old under the Old Covenant, I read Ezekiel's uh, prophecy. The, the temple was, chapter, chapter 5, verse 9, and in chapter 5, in, in Ezekiel, you will see that there's this prediction about the destruction of the temple. They've heard, heard this sort of judgment before. So the disciples want to know, wow, what, when is this going to take place? And so they ask. And Jesus came out from the temple and was going away when his disciples came up to point out the temple buildings to him. And he answered and said to them, Do you not see all these things? Truly I say to you, not one stone here shall be left upon another which will not be torn down. So Jesus predicts in this passage, in this verse, that this temple is going to be destroyed. He's not talking about a future rebuilt temple. The New Testament doesn't say anything about a rebuilt temple. He's talking about the temple that he had just come out of. He's talking about the temple that the disciples had asked about its future. And he says here, not one stone here will be left upon another. Now people will say, oh, we go over to Israel today, there's still stones uh, there, the, 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 the wailing wall. The, that had nothing to do with the temple. It's just more of a retaining wall uh, than anything else. The temple itself, not one stone, in fact, has been left upon another. If you go over to Israel today, if you didn't know that, that uh, the place where the Dome of the Rock is, that that's the temp where a temple stood, you would never even know there was a temple there. Jesus' prediction came to pass just as he had said. Verse th 3 of Matthew chapter 24 he says, And as he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And you notice that th they equate the destruction of the temple with Jesus' coming. 
And they also equate it with the, the end of the age. Now, some translations, the King James, has the end of the world. The Greek word that's being used here is aeon. It means age, a period of time. It's not cosmos, a, the, the actual physical, the, the physical universe uh, as, as we know it or as, even as they knew it. And so what, what was coming to, to an end here, the temple was going to come to an end. Um, Jesus said in John chapter 2, destroy this temple, his own body, and I will raise it up. And in three days he will raise it up. Uh, Jesus is the new temple. He's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He's the animal sacrifice. Uh, he's uh, no longer do we need a priest who continually sacrifices in the temple for us. Uh, Jesus is all that. He fulfills all of that. Uh, this temple was, uh, was, was, was a temporary edifice anyway. And Jesus returns in judgment to destroy the temple. And they equated the destruction of the temple with Jesus' return. Again, this is not an unusual idea. Uh, you see this in the book of uh, uh, the Old Testament. You see it with Micah chapter 1 where it says God comes down and treads uh, on the mountains. The mountains melt under him. And um, Isaiah chapter 19, it says that Jesus comes on a cloud to Egypt and all the idols tremble at his presence. These are judgment comings. If you look at uh, Revelation chapter 2 and 3, you will see that Jesus' threat to the churches there, if they don't obey and get their act together, that he will come, in fact, judge them. Um, so these judgment comings aren't unusual. And Jesus applies this judgment coming to uh, the destruction of Jerusalem, which we know. With, with, there is no debate that Jerusalem was, in fact, destroyed. The temple was destroyed uh, in A.D. 70 by Roman ar armies led by Titus. Uh, the, the temple building itself... The, 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 uh, the stones were actually pried apart uh, by Roman soldiers because as the temple was ablaze, the gold would m melt it and got into the mortar joints and they broke the stones apart in order to get the melted gold out. And so Jesus' prophecy uh, came, came uh, to pass just like he said it would come to pass. Now, can we then say, well, Jesus came also in AD 70? Yes, he did. How do we know this? Well, first off, he tells us he did. And he was going to. And if he didn't, then Bertrand Russell and Bart Ehrman and others are, in fact, correct. Jesus was mistaken. Modern-day prophecy writers say, no, 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 no. This is, this is, uh, uh, this is talking about a, 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 a future time when the temple is going to be rebuilt. There isn't anything in the New Testament that says about a temple being rebuilt. Uh, it says nothing about that. Uh, the, the temple Jesus is referring to here is the temple that was standing in his day. Um, and let me just take you to near the end of this, verse 34. Therefore, uh, that's, that's chapter 23, Matthew chapter 24, verse 34. Jesus says, Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. So if you read this for the first time, everybody who reads this for the first time, that's what happened to me. When I became a new Christian, I read this. This generation will not pass away until all these things take place. And wait a minute. That's, Jesus is referring to that particular generation. Then someone writes a book and says, no, 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 no. Jesus isn't referring to that generation. He's referring first to a race, a race of people, the Jews. Truly I say to you, um, this race will not pass away until all these things take place. Mm -hmm. At least two problems with that. It's the wrong Greek word. The word for, for race is genos, and the word for generation is genia. Here it's genia. Uh, and it's, there's no mistake about that. Jesus is not saying race. The other problem with it is, if you put race in here, it makes no logical sense. Truly I say to you, this race, that is, this, this Jewish race will not pass away until all these things take place. The implication here is when all these things take place, the Jewish race passes away. Well, that's, that's polar opposite of what this particular position believes. No, Jesus was referring to the generation to whom he was speaking. This is why some will say, no, no, Jesus is really saying, truly I say to you, the generation that sees these signs will not pass away until all these things take place. The problem with that is, that's not what the text says. You have to get rid of the word the, this, and then you have to word, take, add the word the. Uh, verse 33 tells us what generation it is that will see all these signs. Even so, you too, when you see all these things, recognize that he is near right at the door. When who sees them? When you see them. Not us, but them. 
Jesus had that particular generation in mind. Look, there is no getting around what verse 34 says. Uh, this is why you'll find nearly every prophecy writer trying to you know, mold this particular passage in a way that teaches this is referring to our time. Matthew 24, the Olivet Discourse, is not referring to our time. It is, in fact, referring to the generation leading up to and including the destruction of Jerusalem in A.D. 70. Let me just go through two passages quickly here uh, just to show you uh, the, the, the difficulty people have and how easy it is to avert these difficulties if, in fact, you interpret Scripture with Scripture. Verse 14, In this gospel the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world for a witness to all the nations, and then the end shall come. Well, again, very poor translation. In this gospel the kingdom shall be preached in the, the, uh, all the, the oikumene for a witness to all the nations, and then the end shall come. The end of what? The end of the age. Uh, that word there, uh, oikumene, or inhabited earth, is the same word that's used in Luke chapter 2, 1, which talks about how far out the gospel was, uh, the, the, the taxation would go um, under Caesar Augustus. The word there is oikumene, throughout the inhabited earth, or throughout the Roman Empire. The gospel being preached here is only had to go out as a witness as far as the tax went in Luke 2, 1, that is throughout the Roman Empire. And since we aren't witnesses to all these things, we can't be the ones doing the witnessing here. The only ones who were a witness were those who, in fact, saw Jesus face to face. Colossians 1, 6 talks about how the gospel had gone out into all the world. Uh, Colossians 1.23 says that the gospel had been preached to every creature under heaven. 1 Timothy chapter 16, Romans chapter 16, verses 27 and 28. These are passages that you can see in my books, uh, Is Jesus Coming Soon and Last Day's Madness. The other one is here, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. Actually, it says the sign, the sign is, is that the Son of Man is in heaven. Um, this is a direct quotation from... Uh, uh, Daniel's uh, chapter 7 where it says, And you will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He comes up to the Ancient of Days. This isn't a passage which, which demonstrates that Jesus comes down to earth and reigns on the earth. This is a passage which is his vindication. He comes up to the Ancient of Days as Daniel chapter 7 verse 13 teaches. Uh, so this isn't a passage of uh, a descent, it's a, it's a passage which talks about an ascension. So we know who the audience is, it's that particular audience, Jesus uses the second person plural. We know that the gospel had in fact been preached as a witness to all the then known world. We know that Jesus did in fact ascend to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. We know that verse 34 says, with, 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 without any equivocation, that this generation refers to the generation to whom Jesus was speaking.